5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. plot. The plot. It's always the plot. It's not <laughs> the plot. <laughs> I wonder what the plot is. The plot's always usually important in everything, in hacking. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty essential. <laughs> it's essential, right? It depends. Uh, sometimes it's a really good plot. Sometimes it's a bad plot. But I think the guys we're going to talk about today this is very important. So I, let's go, I, should we just kind of kick it off? Yeah, and go we're for back. it. We're back. If you guys haven't guessed from the title, it's all about the 5th of November. So who's that from? I mean, who are we trying to represent? Yeah. What's so that, that, that soundbite was from V for Vendetta, right? And yeah. he wore a Guy Fox mask, which yes. was adopted by Anonymous. Anonymous. Right. Finally. One of, one of their biggest campaigns ever that kind of put them on the map. Which was so their go down attack on the Scientology. Yep. I'm down. Let's do it. Anonymous, <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to talk about Anonymous for, I think, since we started. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's about time. I think the 5th of November, I always uh, watch V for Vendetta. Um, and the mask is just iconic of Anonymous, right? So I think it's a perfect time to kind of dive in a little bit on the history. Not going to cover everything. I mean, there is literally a book written on it that is... I don't know, 200 pages that anybody can pick up because um, there's a lot. I mean, Anonymous did a lot in their heyday. And uh, but what I wanted to kind of do is, you know, talk about the Scientology, talk about the Westboro Baptist Church, talk about a little bit of the origins and then bring it all forward to the first time that Anonymous really showed some teeth, showed that they actually had some skill and okay. uh, decimated their victim <laughs> crushed them. yes i think i know exactly what you're talking about too. but yeah. for those that don't know exactly who guy fox is and what the mask is it's that white mask with like the black whiskers and the very nefarious grin right yeah <laughs> and then yeah. the long wig hair like you know short shoulder length uh wig hair kind of from you remember that character from incredibles the, yes. the little lady that builds all the suits. Edna. Yeah. <laughs> same, same hairstyle as Edna, but <laughs> with a guy fox mask. Such a weird description. <laughs> but it's on, but it's spot on. <laughs> but it's good. So I like it. If you don't know Edna and Incredibles 2 is the, you know, that's all I can help you out with. But yeah. <laughs> you said you said there was some history behind the mask. I didn't even know there's more history. Yeah, I mean, so there's one scene in the movie that's very iconic where it, there's a huge uprising with the people. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the plot of the movie, but basically there's an uprising of, uh, you know, people that are all wearing the same mask, representing the same idea, uh, opposing um, this this uh, fascist government. Right. Yeah. So Anonymous, which was this group uh, that kind of formed on very organically formed on 4chan, which is a website um, with all kinds of crazy stuff, but <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a uh, uh, very intense. It's like Reddit on steroids, probably okay. probably be a better way to describe it if you're familiar with Reddit. Uh, but anyway, it's like a massive bulletin board pretty much, right? Right. Yeah. Image board. Um, people would go on there and they would get, um, mandatorily assigned anonymous right um just to keep everybody so that nobody knew who anybody was and and okay. this group kind of became a hive mind and would pull off all these pranks and do all these weird things on the internet and um one of the things that the 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 group liked was a website called gawker and gawker got a hold of this video of Tom Cruise, who is, you know, probably one of the biggest uh, Scientologists, Scientologists, you know, For sure. and it was this weird video where he just, I don't know, he's just odd. I'll just leave it at that. Cause I don't want Scientologists, private investigators tracking me down and harassing me, <laughs> <laughs> but they had basically been able to pull the web, pull the video off every website that it went on, except for Gawker. Gawker decided, you know what, we're going to do it. And, uh, the church sent out this cease and desist letter and um, basically started, I think, suing Gawker and that kind of pissed off 
the the guys uh, or the the group of anonymous and so there's kind of this all all out war in 2008 uh that started and um on the board on 4chan they organized this huge meetup around the world and thousands of people showed up wearing these guy fox masks uh really? and protesting against the church of scientology yeah where where did they where was the protest all over the world, Los Angeles, oh, wow. Australia, in the UK, everywhere. Yeah. One day situation, same day. Yep. Yep. In fact, I remember seeing an, a report or an interview with one of the guys and, you know, he, he just, he went downtown LA and he thought he was going to be the only one. And he, you know, brought his mask and he got down there. And as he turned the corner, he just saw like hundreds of people there. And he, and he was just like amazed. He was blown away that it actually worked. Like all these people were, you know, meeting and, uh, you know, combining their forces, basically. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and so this war was not only a protest in front of the Scientology, but a bunch of pranks, right? So they were sending faxes to the all the fax lines that Scientology had uh, that were just black ink, just full pages of black ink to like run out their ink cartridges. Uh, they would do prank calls to their hotline. Um, and then it kind of evolved into denial of service attacks um, against all of the Scientology websites um, oh using my God. Anonymous's famous uh, low orbit ion cannon tool. Yeah, uh, which yeah, that originates just, from like Command and Conquer. Net, right? Yep. If they had. Yep, correct. And that kind of uh, that MO was pretty much what they would do for, for everything, right? Uh, as the years went on. So that was back in 2008. 2010 um, or 2009, we had the WikiLeaks stuff happen and um, all these companies started pulling back uh, support for WikiLeaks, right? So PayPal refused to allow um, donations to the WikiLeaks website. So that pissed them off. And then Visa and MasterCard. And so uh, Anonymous organized, you know, denial of service attacks against PayPal, which worked right? Took down the website, took them offline for a little while. Uh, then next was MasterCard and Visa. I worked with some of the people from MasterCard that talked about that and how crazy it was at that time and uh, all the different things they were doing to try and uh, not only get intelligence about the group, but also find out, you know, how they operated, who they could prosecute, all that good stuff. <laughs> it's how, just crazy. how long would these sites go down for when they would do these attacks on them? Was it like just like short bursts or were they yeah, really it'd be like usually a day, days. you know, or a couple hours. Uh, some were a couple days, uh, but they wouldn't last get, very long. But enough to get, do some damage, right? Yeah, yeah. They made their point, essentially. It's enough right. to raise some flags. Right, because, I mean, you're talking if, you know, PayPal can't take transactions for even a couple hours. That's a lot, yeah. Right, that's probably sure. millions of dollars that they're losing. And that you're talking about what, how many years ago? PayPal used to be the top, right? That's that was like the number one way to send money digitally. Yeah, back in 2010. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So 2009. Yeah, I can imagine. Wow, that's crazy. So what else? What else did you do after that? Right. And so the, there was just really a lot of like DDoS attacks that happened, right? And every time Anonymous got riled up about something, you knew a DDoS attack was going to happen. <laughs> like yeah. it just kind of was the, the modest operandi, uh, the MO for, for anonymous. And yeah, it would, it would be annoying and it would be, um, you know, an inconvenience, but it wasn't really detrimental to any of these companies. I mean, yeah, they lost some money, but it wasn't, Group. um, you know, it wasn't huge, right. You know, yeah, that you yeah. knew that things would return back to normal eventually and you would be fine. Um, you just had to like ride out the wave pretty much. Right. You had to ride it out or you, uh, you could mitigate the attacks eventually. And, you know, that's kind of, I think how we got some of the services that we have now, like Cloudflare, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but as this was happening, um, one of the things was a company called HB Gary that got hired to basically, uh, so bank of America, sorry, let me talk, let me back it up a little bit. Okay. Bank of America made it on the radar for anonymous and anonymous was going after them. And bank of America Why? was reaching out to security firms to find out what could be done. What and happened one of the, the firms, bank of America? Did you know what's that? 
I said, what did Bank of America do? Do you know? I don't know. Like, Bank why of did America's they get on done a lot? <laughs> They're just being Bank of America evil corporation. They are. All yeah. right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, without getting uh, charged with slander or whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I know other things that they've done. <laughs> All right, fair enough. But uh, but yeah, Bank of America reached out to a uh, a company called HB Gary. And uh, HB Gary was looking into ways of discrediting anonymous uh, and, and then uh, what eventually led into HB Gary federal, which is a, a subsidiary of HB Gary, uh, which was ran by a guy named Aaron Barr. And <clears throat> this was like 2011, right? And HB Gary federal had been around for two years at this point. I think they started in 2009. And uh, Greg Hogland, uh, which was a well-known hacker, still is, um, had a couple different projects that kind of put him on the map. Rootkit.com was one of them. Um, wrote a couple books. Like I have one of his books on game hacking. Um, you know, back in the day, you could uh, program or, or uh, script bots in World of Warcraft that would allow you to go get gold, and then you could buy it on the on the wild black market, uh, that's so <laughs> which by the way, is that. one of the sketchiest things I've ever done. <laughs> that's so cool. Hey, but this HP gay, what were, they were like a security company. Yeah. Security consulting company, just like Tavora. Um, they had some big com- accounts. I mean, they worked with the government and everything. And so this subsidiary wasn't really making a whole lot of headway, right? There wasn't a whole lot of um, need for this company. And so Aaron Barr was looking for ways to promote it and get it out there. And one of his ideas was to demask anonymous. And the way he was going to do this was he was going to infiltrate the online IRC channels, the internet relay chat channels that anonymous okay. uses. Okay. And he was going to correlate whenever someone logged off to these social media profiles, social media, these, uh, social networking profiles, uh, and try and basically uh, assign real life identities to these uh, online uh, anonymous aliases, right? Mm. And um, that started getting a lot of buzz, right? So people started reporting on that. He was going to be doing a, <clears throat> a public speak uh, or speech about it. And um, ahead of that, uh, anonymous decided, you know, Hey, we don't want to be, uh, identified. Right. And so they, um, they were able to pinpoint him in, in the chats and find out who he was and everything. And, um, I think he'd even made like some connections with some of them using his actual identity. And he was, he was telling them like, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to identify anybody. I'm just showing the vulnerabilities of social networking and open source intelligence gathering and all this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and they're like, you know, hey, we d- we don't want to be uh, identified. Like, just back off. And yeah. he wouldn't back off, right? Because it was getting tons of attract uh, attention in the news and media and stuff. So, uh, he became the target, <laughs> right? And uh, Super Bowl Sunday in February two thousand eleven. Uh, he was getting ready for, you know, the big game. It was like four hours to kick off. And yeah, yeah. he noticed that his phone hadn't pinged him in a while, you know, a phone that was normally getting emails every 15 minutes. He hadn't got yeah. anything. Oh man. So yeah, he got, <laughs> so he looks at his phone. Knew. What's that? He knew. I say he knew at that moment. He knew. Oh yeah. Well, maybe not specifically, (laughs) but he was going to find out real quick. (laughs) So he pulls his phone out of his pocket and he sees that it's unable to receive email. And he thinks, okay, that's odd. Right. And he's prompted for his password. And so he goes to put in his password. Well, his password doesn't work. So he's like, uh, okay. So he goes over to his desktop and he tries to log in and nothing works. Right. Oh man. Twitter got taken over. His iPad got wiped remotely. Oh, man. Um, apparently, being a security guy, he used the same password for just about everything. And they took over all of it oh, in one night. No. Yeah. And it was, it was, 
a, a few Bahar. different individuals of anonymous, but the the main key players here were was a guy named Sabu, uh, T Flow, Topiary, and Kayla. And these these four, uh, I mean, decimated <laughs> HB Gary Federal and eventually HB Gary. And oh, I don't man. even know that those two. Co- well, I know HB Gary Federal is not around anymore, but HB Gary I don't think is around anymore either. Um, they were able to exfiltrate a huge number of HB Gary emails that outlined the Bank of America stuff, right, to discredit WikiLeaks and uh, uh, Anonymous and all this stuff. Um, how what was there? How were they able to get in though? Oh, right. So, um, like I read, they, it was something. It was like an SQL injection, but I don't want to. I don't want to be say that for sure. Yeah, so their website was ran on a content management system that was, yeah. I believe, developed in house, or they had hired someone to do it. It wasn't like one of those off the shelf like WordPress. Right, or anything right. Like that. That's what I. And read it had too. the SQL injection stuff. That was one way that they got into the website, and from there, I think we're able to get you know some passwords and um, from the database, and then I think they ran rainbow, rainbow tables against them, and you know we're able to uh, decrypt the passwords. That's great. Um, but the other thing was that they uh, called, they did some social engineering. And so this was actually Kayla and Sabu that were behind this. Um, they emailed the site admin or the CTO, I want to say. And they pretended to be Greg uh, Hogland and saying, hey, I'm, I'm late for a meeting right now, uh, but I need to SSH into this uh, server because I got to present it in a meeting you know, can you reset my password to change me one, two, three? So whoever got that email did and uh, went back and forth because they didn't know the username, uh, which I think, I guess was just Greg <laughs> instead of like, you know, uh, G Hogland or, or whatever. But yeah, um, anyway, they got in and oh, that was, man. that was pretty much the end of it. And, and the password that they were able to get off the CMS and all that stuff was the one that was used across the board for his Apple products and his, even his world of Warcraft account, his Twitter account. And, uh, and then in these emails that got posted on pirate Bay, um, that everyone could look at had all kinds of, you know, information on government contracts, coordination with, you know, different uh, entities and, and projects that they were working on. In fact, I remember, uh, not me, but a guy I know, <laughs> read an email about a malware in the uh, video cards that uh, was being developed um, that was going after the GPU instead of like the CPU, which at the time was huge. I mean, that was like way ahead of its time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, tons of information, uh, ended up pretty much destroying that company just because of the negative press that get, came about, you know, um, and this was for the first time, you know, in what, four years, uh, eight years that anonymous had been around <clears throat> that we'd actually seen some real skill. Um, and that was to credit with the, uh, Sabu, Topiary, T-Flow and Kayla group that had kind of basically went on to <laughs> attack, uh, HB Gary. And from then on, Anonymous was really feared, uh, f- you know, as a, as a major, um, hacking group, just because they were able to actually pull off something more than just a denial of service attack. And, uh, Went on and to do know, some other stuff. I mean, uh, the first videos, major Sony PlayStation hack was, I think, anonymous. And that was in, they were protecting, um, man, I can't remember his name, but the guy who was able to reverse engineer and hack the uh, PlayStation. Don't remember his name. Yeah, I can't remember his name either, but he, they Sony basically started to, to sue that guy. And in response... Uh, anonymous went after him and uh so yeah pretty impressive uh pretty crazy story altogether um i would argue that anonymous did more good than bad (laughs) i'm actually a fan of anonymous i thought that i never did anything with anonymous just so we can clear that right off the bat (laughs) Mm -hmm. but i thought the stuff that they did was for good causes for the most part um 
you know, I, I'm not obviously not a big fan of WikiLeaks and, and some of that stuff, but um, I think going after the Westboro Baptist Church, they were kind of the first ones to really go after them. Um, I think that was good. Um, obviously, the Church of Scientology and <clears throat> standing up for these different uh, organizations, you know, and even the guy who uh, did the Sony hack, uh, man, I cannot like hot something. All, the, all I got to say is whoever is behind their marketing team, genius, genius, absolute genius. Because George Hotz, sorry. Ooh, yes, marketing a, was genius. Marketing genius. That honestly, an honest, probably one of my favorite is just because of that. I appreciate the cinematic element that they really bring to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Majority of the attackers, like all the ATP groups and whatnot, they're very discreet and, you know, try to evade detection and, not be seen or heard and just do damage and whatever right but these guys are like hey we're coming after you and then everybody starts freaking out which is awesome and yeah. they wear the guy fox masks which makes yeah. it even better <laughs> yeah in the early days uh you know there was the people that were part of anonymous were not all technical like hacker type guys they were all part of just this image board 4chan and you had a huge spectrum of skills and education, right? Um, in the early days when they were going after the Scientology and they were prepping the messaging and getting the video ready for, you know, with the famous, uh, you know, uh, guy dressed as in the mask and he's doing the, you know, they did their YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, those people that were behind that were like directors of marketing. And one guy had a PhD in, in like, um, social behavior, so sociology and stuff like that. And all that stuff was very planned and orchestrated. And even Topiary, who um, was part of the big hack, he was not the technical guy. He was really the, the guy who um, did the press releases and did the, uh, you know, commentary on stuff like that, right? He was kind of like a spokesperson, if you will. Um, he has a pretty good interview. If you ever watch it, it's like back in 2013 at wired.com. Uh, they had him guest speak after he got out of prison and the kid was like 19, I think. And, um, you could just see his stage presence. I mean, for being like this awkward hacker kid, um, man, he could really he, deliver a speech and really, really <laughs> articulate what went on and, uh, made light of the whole situation. You know, the fact that he was really just the spokesperson, um, but was being treated as like this uh, international terrorist <laughs> when he was being in jail, he just thought it was hilarious. Um, so it's definitely pretty interesting. And, and yeah, I would 100% agree that their marketing was on point for sure. <laughs> so, Big time. I yeah. mean, we were supposed to get the masks, but they didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine, I mean, I never ordered it, but <laughs> yeah, okay. I have one somewhere. It's, it got buried somewhere. I have no idea where it's at. <laughs> I wonder, I mean, I wonder where they are now, though. They haven't done anything. There's no news of them. And I don't know. There's nothing. No one in the, you know, big corporate world companies are really being uh, mega a-holes now to be picked yeah. on or to be targeted, I'd say. There Maybe was a Facebook. few. I mean, I they, they're still around. Maybe it's time for Facebook to get hacked by somebody. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> somebody take down this guy's meta thing. <laughs> Just stop, man. Just stop. That's my <laughs> But yeah, they're still around. I think they're just not as, uh, I mean, not that they were very organized before, but it was more like, Hey, this is where we go to a non ops. Uh, you know, they did, they had different IRC channels and, and they even had a website, you know, that was, um, you could jump in and volunteer for different operations and stuff like that. I don't know that that's still around. I haven't, I haven't circled in those groups in a while, so I have no idea, but uh, I know they still are around um, doing stuff. Uh, I think they waged war on Donald Trump for a little while, um, but that didn't pan out, obviously. Yeah, I uh, remember that. They called him out, but then nothing ever came out of it. Right. <clears throat> and so I think they're, they're still trying to, you know, organize stuff, but I, I think you just need the, the attention that they had, that momentum and that, uh, um, vi viral viralness, I guess, uh, you know, when everybody was in on it and, uh, wanting to find out more, 
like when that happened, you know, some of the, some of the people that talk about it now, if you, if you read some of the interviews, they say that, you know, the IRC was just flooded with thousands of people uh, that didn't even know what they're doing. They were just kind of sitting in watching the chat just to see what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody was really participating, but um, Topiary, T-Flow, Kayla, and Sabu went on to form a uh, kind of a rogue branch of a not uh, anonymous called Lulsec. And, and we can talk about that in another episode, <clears throat> but uh, they went on a, on a binge. <laughs> they wreaked havoc Lulz. for, a Sick. good solid month, I think, if not more, <laughs> where they were just hacking everything. Sony Pictures, the FBI, <laughs> like uh, multiple governments, multiple police departments. Um, yeah, and they, that's that's the they PPS went on a tear. Network in 2011 is, I guess, they're taking claim, claim to fame for that one. That what's that? The PlayStation user account from uh, 2011. Oh yeah. That, yep. Lulz, Lulz sec. Lulz yeah. sec. That's a tough word to say. But anonymous, if you're listening to this, we actually we love you guys, man. Keep it up. <laughs> keep it up. Keep the marketing up. I'm on your side. Um yeah, it was funny. I remember back in like 2012-ish, uh going out to dinner and coming out to my car and having an anonymous flyer for recruitment on my car. Um, really? and I wasn't the only one. It wasn't like they targeted me specifically. It was like a bunch of oh. cars, oh, uh, I see, I had, see. had flyers, but it was just pretty crazy how much influence they had and how much, uh, how many people were involved and really believed in the movement, um, at that time. And, uh, I remember tracking all of this going on at the time, you know, reading in the articles, ours Technica did like such a great follow up on this whole thing back in 2011, and I remember going to DEF CON and at that time there was a hacker called, or he's still around the jester. And he was like feuding with Sabu uh, via Twitter. They were just like going back and forth. And supposedly they were both at DEF CON and both like calling each other out. Uh, and they were like, well, fine, meet me at the pool at the, I think it was the Rio back then. And I was like, oh shit, here they are. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to go out to the pool and find them. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you go out there and it's like who i didn't even know who i was looking for right like i had no idea what these people look for that's so funny but uh, i will say that uh that was the last time sabu was online or not the last time but at that time he kind of disappeared right after defcon mm. and i think it came out later on that he had i don't know if it happened at defcon but he got picked up by the fbi and um and then some other stuff happened, which maybe we'll talk about in our other episode about Lulsec. <laughs> so. Yeah, to be continued. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff these guys have did. Um, and, you know, their movement, the movie V for the Vendetta, if, it's pretty cool, right? It was kind of based off of that George Orwell's 1984, I think. I think they're kind of similar. But um, it's that whole stand up against the higher power. And I think that's what these guys, uh, Anonymous, are really trying to do, right? Yep. Like the Robin yeah, I would, Hood I would the hackers that. or something. So I think for the most part, I think that Anonymous really did try to to kind of stand up to the bully, right? They were trying to yep. really help the mm -hmm. underdog in most yeah, of their totally. cases. Um, sometimes the way they went about it wasn't as obviously great <laughs> or legal. But well, uh, yeah. But then like again, I said, like, I think Anonymous did more good than bad. Um, but I also didn't agree with some of the stuff they did. So yeah, and I mean, to that, you have to keep in mind, just kind of like what you said, they're not necessarily, you know, uh, middle-aged army trained generals on these guys' teams, right? They're, you know, young hackers. Uh, they're young they're young guys and ladies out there trying to make these decisions. So they may not always be the best ones, but I still like their marketing tactics. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's where I'll leave it. It's definitely on point. I will 100% agree with that. <laughs> Um, but and we haven't seen there, anything since, right? Like we no, haven't really haven't. seen any groups that, that put together a message like that. Um, pretty cool. I mean, there's been groups that have done crazier, terrible stuff for sure. But you no, know, the ways these guys are just like, kind of like, oh, are they going to do it? I can't wait to see what they act next, you know? Uh, nobody else has done that. So <laughs> anonymous, if you do listen, just hack somebody cool, you know? Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who. Somebody evil. Hack somebody evil. Yeah. And make him less evil. 
<laughs> make them less evil. <laughs> yeah, humble them somehow. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, with that said, Anonymous, we did it. We finally did that episode. Yep, that's it. So remember, remember the 5th of November. The 5th of November. We always, made it the This, this marks over. my Anonymous Day always. <laughs> anonymous Day. I will be watching this movie, V for Vendetta, while um, November 5th is happening. I'll, I'll start that also yeah and uh just one more thing if you want to know more about uh, anonymous there's a great book called we are anonymous and uh, the author uh, parmi olson does a great job of going back and providing tons of origin information tons of details about each one of these individuals that played a key part in kind of their rampage uh over the years and uh, highly recommend it if you want to know more about anonymous i will probably get that stocking stuffer added to the list (laughs) there you go (laughs) Till next time, a lot of these things that happened, you know, as we kind of discussed, we're all password related and we have an episode actually coming up. So uh, tune in. We're going to be talking with Ben Dimmick about the future of password list security, right? We're going to maybe go into that discussion and this whole concept of absolutely zero trust. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to that conversation. What do you think? Yeah, I think it'll be great. And I think that really what is what it boils down to uh, in the case of Aaron Barr and H.P. Gary Federal. In fact, Topiary even ended his talk with that. (laughs) If you're going to be a security expert, maybe not use the same password for everything. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) At least change the ending, right? Exclamation mark. (laughs) (laughs) Two-factor authentication. (laughs) Don't make it your (laughs) dog's name. (laughs) But don't forget, like, subscribe. Say hi to me and Matt. Send us any recommendations, any questions. We're here to listen. Thanks for listening in. And till next November, we'll see you guys here.